I don't actually know the last time I got a dog card. They're not really something I'm into. But there are lots of colors on this one specifically that I was already thinking of adding to my palette. Fresh wrist. And when mom was in an art store and she saw that they had the new dot cards, she wanted to know if there were any colors in it that I actually, like, were there enough to justify getting the dot card. And for this one, there are. So, I've got the dot card. And we're going to open that. I will say, I love how Schmincke packages their dot cards. They are lovely. And just like feel far nicer than the Daniel Smith ones. The Daniel Smith ones are so expensive and just don't feel anywhere near as nice. I do also have a Daniel Smith dot card hanging around the studio. So let me know if you want to see that swatch out as well. Because I totally have time to do that. So this is one of the new dot cards. I think they came out with four at the end of... 2023 there were four new dog cards maybe there were five and this is the exclusive colors one do i think it's actually exclusive colors no um the naming feels a little bit gimmicky but i do appreciate all the colors that are in it and that it's a pretty good breakdown of sort of all the color families but like cadmium yellow is an exclusive. Titanium yellow is an exclusive. Cadmium red deep, not exclusive. So like the naming feels gimmicky, but there are lots of individual pigments in this that I already wanted to try. So we're just going to swatch it out straight onto this card. I do really like the paper Schmincke uses for their dot cards. And I know this because I have one of the Schmincke dot cards from an event at Gortzman's in Toronto. That's like 18 months ago, Schmincke did an event there. And they gave away super granulating dot cards before they were available anywhere else. It was awesome. So we're going to get into this. Uh, the first one is Titanium Yellow, which is PY53. Do you want to have PY53 already in your palette? Let's grab the single pigment swatch book. I want to say I do from Daniel Smith. I do from Daniel Smith. Next is a yellow that I can't pronounce. It starts with an M. It starts with a V. Um, oh, it's really pretty. It's like what I want yellows to be. It has been on my list. It's been saved in my Jackson's cart. But I didn't press purchase. I tend to use my Jackson's basket like a way to just save stuff. It is PY 148. Nope, 184. Can you tell I have a brain injury? 184, which I don't have. I go from PY 159 to PY 216. There's nothing in between. This is cadmium yellow light. Again, it doesn't feel exclusive. I would have expected with the naming exclusive when they first released these, like for it to be colors that didn't feel so standard. I guess that's the best way to put it. But there are some fun things thrown in. This is another PY53 down here. And I've also had this one in my basket on Jackson's because it just, it's a much darker version than Titanium Yellow. And I really like the way it feels. Uh, Cadmium Yellow Middle, right, is what we're on next. It's PY35. Oh, the cadmium yellow deep is a mix. Huh. All right. So reading ahead. 
I'm not looking at the granulation at this point. I'm just looking at the pigment numbers. So this is PY 35 and PO 20. I do have a soft spot for PO 20. I absolutely love it in my palette as a sort of base orange color. Though I don't love cadmium orange hue. So this is cadmium orange light. It is PO 20. I don't have their version. I have the Cosmic Creations version. And I would say they're pretty similar. There goes the Cosmic Creations version. PO 20. I think Laura's is actually probably more similar to the Cadmium Orange Deep. I think it's a lot of so it's not casting a weird shadow. Yeah. Laura's is pretty similar to the Cadmium Orange Deep. And I do, as like a base orange, I do enjoy PO20. So, happy to know that. I like their versions as well. We have Cadmium Red Orange, which is another PO20. It's always interesting to see all the different versions you get when you see, like, pigments are processed differently. Because this will look very different from papaya. I'll bring the papaya swatch down here. So that you can see it has significantly more texture to it. And that's not just because of the paper. It's just got more going on. Uh, and if you've got any questions, feel free to ask. Like, and it's very orange red. Or red orange. Yeah, it's called red orange. Uh, cadmium red light. Not a fan of cadmium reds. Um, you called the super granulating series you know my feelings on cadmium reds um, I don't hate the cadmium red light which is always good um, let's look at their cadmium red middle these are all PR 108s cadmium red's always going to be PR 108 I suspect I will like the cadmium red deep the best just because that's the version of the normal smalls that I like the best I will say that it's very different from Volcano Red, which is another PR108. However, they've processed the pigment for Volcano Red is very different from how they process it for their normal line, or whoever they're sourcing it from has processed the pigment very differently. But based on like the how long they've been making it for and the quantity they produce of it. I have to think that they're doing it in-house. Just based on what I know about dealing with pigment manufacturers. Here's for pink red. It sort of falls in between, but the granulation is incredibly different. Next up, we have Perilene Dark Red. Oh, PR 178. I have Perilene Maroon and Perilene Violet, but I don't know that I have Perilene. No, I have PR-177 and I have PR-179. Huh. So what do you look like? Uh, so far, I'd say you look like a hot pink. I don't know that I'd classify you as a red. You are very hot pink. That is the weird naming thing with colors, is that sometimes you swatch a color and you go, mm. I don't think that you actually are what you're named, but okay. That's how I feel about Perilyn Dark Red. Ruby is PV19.
Oh, I do love a good PB-19. And there are so many different versions of it. Oh, my favorite version of Quinacridone Magenta is coming up next. So my favorite version of Queen Magenta is PR-122, which is the version Laura has in her shop. And I much prefer it to the Daniel Smith Quinacridone Magenta, which is PR-202. It's just a much nicer color. And I would say that's pretty similar to either Laura's. You seem like you're pretty similar. Maybe that's just because I've spent a lot of time looking at photos lately. Uh, it might be a little bit brighter. Yeah, it might be a little bit brighter, but it's also on very white paper compared to what I'm using. Like this is very clearly white paper. I sort of want to know where Schmincke gets their paper because it is so white compared to any of the watercolor papers I have. This is Cobalt Violet Hue. I have this in my palette from Schmincke up until like November, I think, was when Rowan Small released their color. So up until November, they were the only matte producer of this pigment. You couldn't buy it as a small shop looking to produce paint with this pigment, you could not buy PB62 from anywhere. So, Schmincke was the only place to get it. They used it in super granulating mixes. And I don't love it, but that's mostly because it felt too similar to PB15s in my palette. I think if I hadn't have needed it for a very specific project, I probably wouldn't have added it to my palette, but I needed it for the Schmincke Super Granulating series, and so I added it to my palette. And there are definitely colors like that that were added over the course of the series that I find that I like now more that the series is over than I did when I was spending money on them for the series. And realizing that actually I didn't know when I was going to be using these colors again. Next is PB60 Delta Blue, which I guess is their version of an Indian Glow, because when the Indian Glow is PB60, it feels very Indian Glow. I don't know if that makes sense, it's the Indian Glow pigments. Um, it reminds me of the, who's to be the flag? Roman Small. Totally the Roman Small one. Cobalt Blue Light is PB28. I don't know that I like it as much as the Daniel Smith Cobalt Blue that's also a PB28. I'm finding it hard to replace the Daniel Smith Cobalt Blue and Cobalt Blue. Cobalt. Cobalt Teal Blue. That's what it's called. Those are both colors that I am struggling to replace in my palette. Mostly because Daniel Smith tubes are so expensive. I'm finding it hard to find the ones I want in the stores. Uh, Cobalt Cerulean. I don't know that I have a Cobalt Cerulean. I've got lots of Cerulean's. It's a PB36. They're just the same pigment number, but Cerulean Blue and Rose and Cobalt Blue. Yes, you are. Uh, doesn't feel Cobalty. Feels much more Cerulean-y. Cobalt Azure is PB35. Cobalt Turquoise is PG50. Will we replace Daniel Smith Cobalt Teal in this video? Oh, co yeah, Cobalt Teal Blue in this video. 
Will I finally find something that I like more? Oh, it's going to have a hard time because I am obsessed with that color. It is my favorite color. It got used so much in the Shrinking Super Granulating series, which, if this is similar, will not surprise me. Um, I just didn't have a PG 50 from Shrinking when I filmed the series. And so I had no way of actually knowing 100% what their version looked like. Because online swatches are only so accurate. Oh. Mm. I'm more blue than I want. Can I be more blue? Because we're white paper. I have you bunched to swatch and I don't. Oh, we're going to have to compare at some point. Um, because it could just be because of how white this paper is. Because I don't dislike it. It just feels a bit too bright blue. Cobalt green turquoise is PG36, which I already know I love. I have many in my palette that are PG36. I'm a fan of cobalt colors. I just love how they look. I love their texture. And I'm very careful that I don't lick my paintbrush when I use them. Uh, this is such a pretty color. And I will be getting a pan slash tube of it at some point. In all honesty, it'll probably be my first purchase with Jackson's affiliate credit at some point. Be a pan of that because um, I absolutely love it. This is cobalt green dark, which is PG 26. And I have whose version do I have? Is it Cosmics? Yeah, it's Cosmics. This is Pine by Cosmic. And I would say they look almost identical. There is not a big difference between that and that. There's like a little bit of a color difference, but not huge. Not enough to justify having both. Whereas that is stunning and makes me want to pan right now. The only other color I felt that way about is this yellow. And this yellow. So we've had three. And I do like this. I don't like that it's called a dark red. It doesn't feel dark red to me, but I do like it. This is cobalt green pure. So this, this is the color that was supposed to be used in a bunch of the super granulating mixes. I searched high and low for a pan of this or a tube of this and could not find one. And so was stuck with this Daniel Smith one, which did not work. If you've seen the Schmincke Super Granulating video, this pan that, or this tube had been sitting on the shelf for so long that the pigment had totally separated and the pigment, like it totally needed to be like reground in and that's not a skill I have. And it makes sense now why Daniel Smith has discontinued the color because it was awful to work with. This was the color I needed. Could I find anywhere in the city of Toronto that stocked this color? Or could I like order a tube of it from anywhere? No. But it's on this dot card, which means Schmincke must still make it. Because why would they put something on a dot card that they don't make anymore? All right. I'm putting dots. So it confirmed, it confirmed the two yellows that I really liked. They have to still make this green. Why, why would you put a color on a brand new dot card if you don't still make it? <laughs> oh, I went to so many art stores trying to track down that green and talked to so many people 
who couldn't remember the last time they'd seen it, couldn't order it in. And it's on this dot card. Do I have any of the Shrinko Streets around me that I could just like pull and figure out? All right. What Schminke palettes used the screen? Can I, on the spot, do one of these colors? Schminke dupes. Has not been open since December. Um, and I need one that uses chart is PG-19. So the all options are Tundra Green, Forest Brown. All right. Forest Brown, Cypress Raw Umber. No, forest Green. Um, Let's pull this brown mahogany brown. And then mahogany brown. And let's see if I actually tender. I want tender like palette number two. Are six. Mars Brown. Mahogany Brown and Mars Brown are what we need. Can I do this? The trick is do I actually know where they are in my palette? Because, yes, I put the palette together like 10 days ago. Is it already a disaster again? Yes. Ah. Uh... Mahogany brown, Mars brown. Do I not have paper? I do have paper. So. Uh, I don't actually have colors to match from. Do I? What colors do I need? I need tender green. And I need Green. Oh. All right. Let's hope that they're equally busy to find. Mom, if you're one of the people watching, thanks for letting me steal your palette. Uh, tundra green. All right. I can't believe after all these months, I actually have this color. Oops. 
actually no we're just gonna use a piece of bad hog because it's easier to replace in all honesty so tender brown and let's just let the way of honor All right, tender green. And forest green. The only difference between these two colors is the brown they use. They both use the same cobalt. And I think both have cobalt as the second pigment. I'm just making a mess. This is why I can't go off book and just do random stuff. But the excitement of finally having this green pigment that I couldn't track down in this series. So I went with the Daniel Smith version, but then didn't really work. Like, just want, just want to see, because these were the two, I think for both of these colors, I said, if you could track down the actual pigment, like if you would track down a different version, you could probably do it. So, need the forest. Do I not have a green palette? Of course I don't have a green palette. That would be practical. Yeah. Steal stuff off this palette. And remove stuff off this palette so we can steal this palette. That's the words I was looking for. Alright. And it's now covered in paint. We need this green. And mahogany brown. And there you go. There's forest green. I believe tender green is the same where the green comes first and then the brown. Yep. And then Mars brown. Actually too bright. Switch brushes. There we go. All we needed was the right green. So, was that worth? waiting for many many months probably not this is tundra Oh, 
All right. Well, that was a little fun side quest uh, that I did not expect in this video. Really, I just wanted to look at the yellows because I'd already been thinking about getting them for my palette, some of them. And instead, I finally got to properly do two of the Schmincke Super Granulating colors that I've wanted to do for so many months because as soon as I did the Tundra video, I knew that that cobalt was wrong. Like it was one of those like instantly I knew it was the wrong color sort of things. And so finally being able to use that green was so amazing. It does sort of open the mystery up more because it was so impossibly hard to track down, but they are including it in this dot card. So does that mean that it's going to be easier to find now? I don't know. Time will tell. Hopefully I'll be able to track down either a tube or a pan of it. I think I'd probably prefer a pan just because sometimes I find cobalts from the tube that you decant and the pans get hard to activate. But overall, this was a whole lot of fun. I could really, like, it, just watching out the colors was fun, and then it had, like, this really fun little side tangent of realizing that I had the right green. So I hope you enjoyed watching. I do have a Daniel Smith dog card. So if you want to see that, let me know. I think I've actually got most of the colors from the dot card in my palette for the last couple of years, but there are some that I've been looking at that are in it. So I will consider swatching it in a video. I do enjoy doing lives like this. They are fun. And they sort of break up the day of filming other projects, which is great. So thanks for watching.